Hello, thank you for joining me today. Welcome to The Math Reflective. My name is Kathy Dixon and I'm a sixth grade teacher in Illinois. And the reason that I'm doing this video today is I'm participating in the virtual conference on humanizing mathematics. And I want to respond to a prompt. How do I highlight that the doing of mathematics is a human endeavor? And I have three things that I wanna share with you today. Just to give you a little bit of background before I get started in sharing how I humanize mathematics in my classroom, I teach sixth grade math. I don't think I said that before. And I teach two different levels of math, but all sixth grade students. Two of my classes are co-taught with our math interventionist. Her name is Mary Dooms. And the other three classes I teach on my own. The first thing that we do, and that is to teach about the brain and growth mindset. So I feel like now when I have sixth grade students coming to me, they've been hearing it since kindergarten. So sometimes they don't want to do too many activities with growth mindset, but we definitely now give them a learner questionnaire and they just fill it out and put an X next to the things that um, I, they can identify with. And then the next day we talk about it and we have them put like an F or a G if it's a fixed mindset or growth mindset, just so that they're, they're aware that their attitude that they bring into mathematics is very important and also teaching them about the research about the brain and how we can be in equilibrium and disequilibrium and how important it is to recognize that and how we can grow from our mistakes. The second thing that I do to humanize mathematics in my classroom is to purposely provide some disequilibrium opportunities. A couple years ago, my math team and I started thinking more about just reflecting on how we were teaching. All the things that we started learning about the brain and giving productive struggle and what a rich mathematical tax look like, task look like really made us think about Dan Meyer's math headache and how you know he called that disequilibrium a math headache. So we started looking for small tasks that we could open um, a unit or a study on a particular concept instead of giving them the context more along the way after they learned some of the foundations basically we were feeding them things instead of them uncovering it themselves. We started with a math headache and you know, just spent a few minutes each class period that week and as we gave them more of the medicine that they needed and they realized the need for the tools that they had to have to solve or figure out that problem. It really excited us and excited our students and we really started to change and turn upside down the way that we were delivering instruction. So that brings me to last year when we decided to pilot a new math resource called Open Up Resources 6-8 Math. We are going to go ahead and do a second year pilot and I'm so excited because I love it. It is problem-based learning, it is inquiry-based, and it definitely provides that disequilibrium for students often enough that we're able to help them make those connections in their brain and dig deeper into the learning. One of the things that I love the most about this is it definitely allows for multiple methods and strategies for students. And the students are really driving the class period on their own. So they're recognizing that it's a human endeavor and they're seeing that, wow, you did it this way and you did it this way. There's not just one way. I think that's a way that we humanize mathematics. The third way that we humanize mathematics in our classroom is just by building a positive classroom culture that's going to contribute to that. We got this idea from Sarah Vanderwerf. She's on Twitter. I'm gonna go ahead and link below information on how to get in touch with any of the people that I mentioned in this video, as well as any resources that I mentioned. But we used the name tent last year, and basically that's the first five days of school. The front part is just the name of students. And then inside, the students are able to, even on the very first day of school, write a question that they might want answered, tell you a little bit about them, draw a picture, give some kind of information. And that shows students that we really want to get to know them as people, not just as math students or an ID number in our classroom. We want to know who they are. And then the beauty of that is that we are able to respond to them each day. So we're building that foundation of a relationship that every student matters and we value who they are. That is one way that we are contributing to our classroom culture. Another way that we work on that classroom culture that humanizes mathematics is just by the phrases that we use as teachers. I, if I asked my co-teaching partner, she would say that the phrase that I use the most is, we're building knowledge together. 
I say it over and over. I'm sure I said it like once a week. And what that shows students is I don't have to have it right the first time. Look at Mrs. Dixon makes mistakes a lot and so does Mrs. Dooms and it's okay. And one of the phrases I love that my teaching partner says is she says, who wants to take a risk? Oh great, you know, Jacob's gonna take a risk. We celebrate that in the classroom, that you don't have to have it right, but we just want you to make some kind of attempt and then we'll figure it out together. Well, thanks so much for watching. I hope you found it interesting and informative and I'm so grateful for the opportunity to tell you about how I highlight that the doing of mathematics is a human endeavor. If you're interested in seeing more videos or following my channel, please subscribe. Go ahead and hit the like button and hit the bell for notifications if you want to continue to find out when I post new videos. Until next time, are you ready for more?